This is Dr. Chad Lavender from Marshall University describing our technique in sigilless partial medial meniscectomy. This patient's a 57-year-old male with right knee pain, frequent mechanical locking symptoms, medial joint line pain. He felt conservative management with injections and physical therapy. His exam showed zero to 135 degrees range of motion, positive McMurray test, no effusion, and pain and tenderness along the medial joint line. Here you can see an MRI of the patient's knee showing the medial meniscus tear reaching the inferior articular margin. In this case, we used an incisionless partial medial meniscectomy using the Arthrex nanoscope. We began by placing a spinal needle into the knee joint through which a nitinol wire is passed. The spinal needle then gets removed and replaced with a 2.2 millimeter nano sheath. The nanoscope gets inserted into that sheath and inflow gets started into that nano sheath. Here you can see we establish a medial portal with a percutaneous approach with a spinal needle and a nitinol wire. We start our partial medial meniscectomy using the nanobiter. You can see how easily it gets under the medial femoral condyle and can reach the posterior joint space. Here you can see we finish up the partial medial meniscectomy using the nano shaver. You can see how easily it gets around the femoral condyle and performs a partial medial meniscectomy. The finished partial medial meniscectomy, and as you can see, no incisions were made on the knee joint for this case. Some technique pearls when changing compartments redirect the nanoscope and nano instruments inserted percutaneously prevent the need for an incision. And always remember, do not hesitate to convert to a standard arthroscopy. Some advantages to nano instrumentation. It provides treatment in those difficult to get to tight spaces, such as tight knees, younger patients, and deformity cases. It can be used percutaneously or with the aid of a nano working cannula, and it also helps avoid iatrogenic damage to the femoral condyles and other structures in our joints. Here you can see how the nano biter gives us improved access and instrumentation versus the standard biter, which is significantly larger. The standard joint space is around five millimeters, and you can see here nano instruments allow us for much more maneuverability within the joint because of their size. You can see the comparison on the screen, the 3.4 millimeter biter to the standard nano biter. Nano instrumentation is safer for all patients, but it is especially helpful with tight or small knees, as I mentioned, in addition to females and when working on that medial meniscus. 4.7 millimeters of joint space is required to insert a standard biter versus only 2.5 millimeters of joint space for the two millimeter nano biter. Another exciting nano instrument is the nano probe. It's atraumatic, has a blunt tip, so it can be inserted percutaneously, has a strong shaft, it's very light, ergonomic, and we find this very useful in probing the ACL and meniscus repairs and other structures in and around the knee.